Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to uh, Mind House, episode 73. 73, inshallah. Uh, on the video again. So I've, I've been uploading every episode actually to um, Sarah Master's YouTube channel, um, but most of them don't have video. Just It's just the audio with an image or whatever. Uh, but uh, the last, I don't know, three or four have had video. So um, I guess I'll keep uploading the videos. And then we've got a YouTube channel as well, right? Yeah, we've got. Oh, we haven't actually haven't done anything to it at the moment. Yeah, but we do have a YouTube channel. So um, I think maybe future nice episodes stuff. you'll start seeing them go up there or something, inshallah. But yeah, if it, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't, personally don't listen to podcasts. Like I don't watch podcasts, um, but I guess some people do, right? Yeah, some people actually put them on. Some people like to just re- like. Sometimes if I'm cooking or doing anything else, I'll have the the, the video on. Mm. Most of the time, I'm just listening to it, but then I might just look at it occasionally. Really? It adds a, yeah, it adds like a separate element of, of flair, doesn't it? Mm. Um, I was wondering, though, how come you've got access to Zoom on in the UAE? <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah, they unblocked they, it, basically. Uh, oh, really? Maybe two, three weeks ago, they unblocked it. So that's been good. Is that right permanent now. or is it just because of this lockdown, do you think? Uh, no, they said it's because of the lockdown, but um, we'll see, man. We'll, we'll see if they keep it. Because, I, you know, they're doing the whole um, Expo 2020, which is like, it's like a six-month kind of event. That her, yeah. I think last time it was in Italy. And it's, the idea is that it's like one big conference where big buyers and sellers can meet and stuff and do business, right? Yeah. And it's like a way for a country to promote itself and its its companies or whatever, right? So yeah. they were supposed to do that here um, starting October this year, but now it's been pushed back to October 2021, okay? Right. So I was thinking that when Expo happens, they're going to have to unblock all this because uh, they, they uh, anticipate millions of people coming for that, right? Um, yeah. But now that that's been delayed... Um, I don't know. Like maybe they'll. That one trying to say is maybe they'll keep Zoom unblocked from now until Expo. Maybe that'll be great. Mm, mm. I'm surprised they limit it. All right. I mean, there's so many other things that. Although I limit how much they block, but there's a lot worse things that they can block out there than. But then I don't know something like this where essentially you're just making calls and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, what it seems to be the reason is. Um, they want the data. They want access to the what's being said on calls and stuff. And Skype refused to give that. And so they said, well, we'll have to block you then. But Zoom, I mean, you know, what I've read about Zoom is they're happy to share your data with everyone, right? So, Yeah, sounds um, like it. Yeah, so uh, I don't know why Zoom was blocked. Um, some people also say it's because they, they want um, the government telecom companies to have a monopoly in the area. But I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, they don't, they don't, do they provide their own alternative softwares? Yeah, they did that. Yeah, oh, where you okay. have to pay for it and stuff. Yeah, all right. That probably, uh, but it was it was not a good question. solution. Otherwise, I'd happily, you know, I wouldn't mind paying for it or whatever. But it's not really a good good uh, software. It's not like you know, like Skype. Everyone knows Skype. Zoom, is, you know, it's kind of become very well known as well. So mm. it's not the same when they make their own one. But yeah, man, it's a t- it's a little inconvenience compared to many things. Mm. So, bro, uh, following on from last episode, we talked about conspiracy theories. We talked about how. Yeah, some of them, they're not theories. They become truths in, you know, after, you know, 20 years later, we find out, yeah, that, that did happen. And some of them, it's just a lot of assumptions going on and stuff like that. But I wanted to kind of go down this hypothetical thing of um, what if, you know, bro, it's, it's actually immense. Like the amount of uh, messages I'm getting about Bill Gates, 5G, coronavirus, vaccines, and RFID mm. chips. Yeah, <laughs> there's yeah. like a ton of it, okay? And, you know, personally, something about conspiracy theories, I think, is it takes a certain personality to be interested in, in it in the first place. Yeah, I yeah. think it's very much personality. Some people are very skeptical people. Some people are very, uh, I don't know, gullible or whatever. Some people are paranoid. So I think that plays a big role. Like me, I'm quite a paranoid person. Um, I, I think I just grew up with a certain mindset. And, you know, like, for example, um, when you, maybe when you grow up uh, with a lot of awareness of corruption happening, mm. even, on a, even on a more local level, you, you kind of, you're ready to believe these kind of things are happening, mm. right? Because you could see it on a local level. So you're like, yeah, why not? 
Um, and there's others like psychological reasons behind it, like wanting to be a victim and all of that. Right. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so I, uh, yeah. So talking about this whole vaccine, for example, vaccine being rolled out to everyone, like everyone kind of yeah. has to take a vaccine um, or if they don't take it, they're going to lose out on some major uh, things that, you know, used to be called rights, for example. This is yeah. something which, uh, as far as I know, there's no proof for it whatsoever. Okay. Um, but at the same time, it's very plausible, right? It's just, yeah. it's plausible, right? So it mean, stays in the domain of theory, isn't it? This is what I, so I, I picked up my phone just to sort of remind myself, but mm. yesterday I was on Twitter and I just searched vaccine into the yeah. Twitter search bar yeah. just to see what people were talking about. <laughs> and just the amount of nonsense I kept yeah. seeing was insane. Um, and now there's, there's even in, I think I've sort of, I haven't read the articles about it, but it's sort of been buzzing around that there's protests now in America, anti-lockdown protests where people oh, are yeah. protesting against the lockdown, protesting against the vaccine thing, yeah. protesting against. And um, it, it's, it's, to be honest, on one hand, we could blame individuals for this conspiracy theory in terms of the people that believe and propagate them. On the other hand, governments do have parts to play because of the, the, lack of transparency throughout the years yeah. and it's a combination of it's a combination of distrust in government and gullibility to believe anything you're said now i know if you say that to someone they, and you say to them why do you believe everything you hear or read they'll say no of course i don't yeah they don't believe everything from you know mainstream media fair enough you've got your distrust but they'll yeah. believe every single whatsapp yeah, exactly. message that gets shared yeah they'll yeah. believe any single like sort of meme post that's put up and yeah you know i mean black and white text and whatever you want to call it yeah. um and it's just like there was, I can't see it now, but there was posts about how to uh, legally decline a vaccine, um, mm. how to, uh, oh, here we go, vac the vaccine agenda. <laughs> oh God, that was a video. <laughs> they said um, there's an article that just came out, a news article saying how they're thinking about doing mandatory vaccinations for, for, for school kids in the UK yeah. because there's been a surge of people not getting vaccinated and that's led to measles outbreaks yeah, yeah. Um, which is like you can see that one to one yeah but people i don't understand okay i understand that people might think that vaccines are bad and they've got you know they're made by the government whatever but why do those people never speak about the illnesses that vaccines get rid of or yeah do you know what i mean protect us against like what yeah what does that mean to a conspiracy theorist who believes mm. that there's a government agenda yeah. like so, so i don't understand in in both sides of the extreme if you like there are sheep okay there are people that just follow what they're told the difference yeah. is who they follow so one uh, the one extreme they follow the mainstream media and the government and they just say whatever they say must be right and then mm. the other extreme is whatever this well-known conspiracy theorist says must be right both yeah. are obviously wrong right because you're, you're just following you're, you're not using yeah. critical thinking um when it comes to like yeah, the vaccine thing, you know, I, I, I know a couple of people, well, I know one person and I know of someone who, uh, you know, is completely against vaccination and, uh, you know, they didn't vaccinate their kids or anything. I heard of one guy, actually, he left, uh, he left one country. Uh, he's from a country. Okay. And he stopped living in that country because vaccination is mandatory there. So he moved right. to a whole other country so he wouldn't have to vaccinate his kids. Okay. Right. Um, uh, so I've, I, don't, I don't know him personally, but that's a real thing, right? Um, the other person who I do know, I've spoken to him about this. And, you know, he d I don't think he necessarily uh, believes it's like fully proven. But what he was saying was, well, and I said this to him and he agreed with me. Yeah, He said that, uh, I, I said to him, sorry, that if you, if you believe there is a, a chance of, let's say, your child developing autism from vaccines, okay, that's like one of the kind of uh, things people think might happen. Um, you've got right. like, it, it, as we see in the world, autism is, is a very low percentage of people that have it, right? So let's say uh, if you if vaccines cause it, then you, you, there's a zero point whatever percent chance that, or maybe it's a one percent chance, whatever, that they will uh, get, develop autism, right? And then yeah. uh, on the flip side, though, if you don't vaccinate them, there's going to be a whatever percent chance that they get smallpox or measles or whatever. So yeah. it depends what risk you want to take. But yeah, this exactly. balancing these risks is only valid if you actually believe it could cause autism. I, I personally have not looked into it enough to actually uh, be convinced of that. Yeah. Um, so, it, but he was saying because I live in the UK, 
my kids are not really at risk from measles and smallpox and these things. So I'm, just, I'm not going to vaccinate them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there I is mean, that risk, you know. The, the, what strikes me is strange is how I don't know what they think the agenda is. Like, well, maybe there isn't I, I an agenda, bro. Uh, but, maybe, but, <clears throat> maybe it's like a small agenda, like um, uh, vaccines uh, make people a lot of money, and it's not forced on people in the UK, but it's like quite they they really do pressure you, right? Hmm. And so it's just a very small agenda of making money, but but the the, the the see this thing about making money, yeah, it's not the individual people that administer this sort of stuff and the doctors and stuff that make no, that no, it's not change. that, yeah. And this is why, like there's levels to it. Like it has to reach a particular level before it starts. The money issue starts kicking in, especially here. A lot of these conspiracy theories start and they really blossom in mm. countries of private healthcare. And, and then you could argue, okay, well, everyone's making money out of that. But here, bro, like if a nurse is telling you that they need it, fair enough, maybe her, or his or her, um, sort of level of understanding of the issue isn't that yeah. deep yeah but then as you go up the sort of uh, hierarchy of experts mm. it has to reach a stage and we've got so many muslim doctors so many muslim healthcare professionals that would advocate this stuff because they see the reality of what you know what, what the deal is yeah. and i think i feel like the biggest um cure not cure but the biggest eye opener for mm. um for for th issues like this is for these people that have these views to really challenge them by in, in, engaging themselves in this discourse the problem mm. is a lot of people who promote these views who are passionate about these views don't put themselves in the arena they don't go and volunteer or go into these environments and see sure. for themselves they just read stuff online sure, and i think yeah. this is what shifted my perspective a lot because i was you know easily i could easily lap up any of that sort of information if i saw something online and some anonymous person wrote about vaccines are killing us or mm. you know there's a conspiracy out, conspiracy out there whatever i would easily lap it up but right. because of my involvement in in certain institutions and organizations and being in those environments all the time mm. um it's just shared away all of this sort of you know the reality has kind of hit me hard like no no we're dealing with real issues here do, do you know what i mean and all these people that are talking loud and proud about um the dangers, the conspiracies, the agendas behind all of this stuff, um, you never see them there, bro. You never see them in these arenas. You never, it's all just, oh, I know someone who knows someone or a sure. friend of a friend. Do you, do you, do you understand? Yeah. And it's the same with people that but are maybe still... that's because then they're, they're not welcome in those uh, spaces because they are dissenting. But you'd think there would be some sort of expose element of, oh, I went in and I asked and I did this and I did that. Yeah. Um, but there is none of that. It's all yeah. just an anonymous I mean, would, sort of conjecture. Well, on, the, on the vaccine issue, you would expect certain studies to come out showing issues. Mm. Um, if there aren't those, then it's a bit like, it's actually two, it could go two ways. It's like, okay, there's no study showing any problem with mm. vaccines. So therefore, just get on with it, right? What's yeah. the problem? But I on think, the other side, you could say, yeah. the fact that there's nothing means that they're hiding it. Yeah. <laughs> so it could go either way. But there's an issue of they, like what does they mean? Um, and it goes back to what we said yesterday, they being like mm. this monolithic group that all think the same and there's no there's no yeah. chinks in that armor. There's also this issue with, when it comes to mainstream media, mm. I know that media outlets have agendas, mm. but individual journalists mm. are individuals as well. And yeah. I don't know, I don't know. I mean, there is obviously the, the, the personalities who are very famous journalists and stuff, but there's also grassroots journalists that are hungry yeah. for any sort of story. Yeah. And, you know, I've engaged with journalists on Twitter before, especially ones from like Vice and, and, and more mm. sort of, you know, out there journalism as opposed to just the main mainstream. Mm. Um, and they're just people and they discuss things like people and they talk yeah, like people. And true. I think the issue we've got is that we don't know journalists. We don't yeah. know, like the, the general public or the people that talk about this stuff don't actually haven't actually sat down and spoken to a journalist on a private level or engaged with them on Twitter or just to humanize them. And this is the issue. The biggest issue is the lack of humanization for any sort of individual in these, mm. in these um, institutions and mm. in these organizations. Mm. I had an argument about an hour ago on, really? uh, on a WhatsApp group. Um, somebody, I could play the video, but it's, I don't know how long it is. I just sort of flicked through it. Essentially it was a video of a patient in a hospital and he's recording the nurses and stuff. Uh, nurses come give him discharge papers um, it might be it might be quite popular now it's being forwarded around uh, from what i can tell give him discharge papers you're free to go he goes oh i can't leave until i've been tested for the virus yeah um, so they go and get security um these are just the bits i've seen i didn't watch the whole thing um 
security trying to make him leave and he's like no 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 i went there's a guy who who's opposite me who died from the virus and i've shared the same toilet as him so i'm not leaving here until i get tested because i'm worried that i'm going to infect my old father or elderly grandparent or whatever at home yeah right and then the following message that accompanied that was uh be careful don't go to hospitals avoid hospitals if you can because look how they're treating patients blah 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 and that was getting spread around with this anti-hospital nhs Mm. whatever sentiment and that just infuriated me because mm. because there was no like reality behind that so let's mm. break that let's break that concept down a little bit and put it into context so we've got a scarcity of tests right scarcity of people available to be tested okay um this individual hasn't developed any symptoms yet but he's scared because he shared the toilet with someone who's died from it opposite them right? yeah Right. Um, so he deserves to get tested. And that's his worldview that I deserve to get tested. Yeah. If you haven't got tests available, then you can't get tested. That's just the reality. Even if you got tested, you'd have to wait a couple of weeks for the results anyway. So you're taking up a bed with no symptoms. You're just sitting there whilst other people mm. are critically in danger. Number two, the people that you're shouting at, the nurses, the security, whoever you're shouting at in that hospital, they themselves are unlikely to have been tested because of the scarcity. Yet yeah. they're in there 24 seven engaged in caring for those people. Mm. Right. So if anyone should get tested, it should be them. Yeah. Number three, the advice is, and this is the issue when I said people are, um, they get everything handed to them. So they're not used to doing anything for themselves. If you're scared about your father or whatever, you're scared about bringing a possible virus home that you don't know if you have or haven't got, the advice is it doesn't develop until two weeks. You don't start seeing symptoms for two weeks. So mm. isolate yourself for two weeks away from your father or whoever it is that you think is mm. vulnerable you until could, you yeah. know you're in the clear. That's the reality. That's what the real world is. Yeah. But asking for, for these impossible things and filming it so you can get some views online that's what really is the the deal here you just want views you just mm. want some sort of hysteria and you're yeah. blaming the individuals on the ground that were just busy saving your mm. life mm. for the lack of this and that yeah. when actually their job is hard enough as it is mm. before you start throwing yeah. that in their faces yeah i think what's happened with that that example is that somebody has filmed one you know event right mm. only one and what happened on the video is true, right? Like mm. he, he wanted a test and he was denied the test. Mm -hmm. Now what the problem is when he adds, he adds fake context to it, right? Or yeah, he exactly. adds his angle to it basically yeah. uh, when it gets spinned into uh, they're denying me this, it's my right. What about my old father, this and that. Yeah. So that, that can happen. Isn't it like the raw yeah. facts um, like that video, for example, is, um, could be could be used either way basically it's, yeah it's, and it's how it's spun it's it, that's yeah. very important a lot of the time it's how it's spun like mm -hmm. um I, I was just playing devil's advocate the other day about uh, bill gates being so into vaccines okay wanting yeah. to he's he's into healthcare for the, in the world trying to improve healthcare in the world he's been doing that for a long time and he's talking a lot about vaccines for for corona and all of that yeah, yeah. now um people seem to think that because Obviously, there's always the background of because he's ri rich, there's an assumption of some evil thing, yeah, right? which yeah, is not yeah. really, it's not really factual, right? Um, so he's rich, firstly. Secondly, um, maybe there's also the, the layer of Microsoft being on, you know, Windows being on everyone's computers and all that. Yeah. yeah. So there's like that, that thing, that element. Probably there's another another element of being him being white, you know, because these days mm. it's bad to be white for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then and then but then you get to the real thing of him talking about vaccines or really encouraging vaccines. A white man involved in Africa trying to eradicate, um, you know, diseases. You know, it's like white savior thing comes in. So so many uh, la yeah, layers yeah, yeah. to it, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but I was just thinking, like, okay, if 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 somebody like Bill Gates, you know, a multi billionaire who wanted to spend the, you know, the last 20, 30 years of his life, whatever, um, helping humanity, then isn't that what it looks like? Like just mm -hmm. spending that money, uh, giving money to WHO, uh, yeah, yeah. spending money, developing vaccines because like, I'm not denying it could be because he has an evil agenda. Okay. There's just no proof of that. But, yeah. um, if like he believes in vaccines, so he's going all in on them. Yeah. Right. If he yeah. didn't believe vaccines, then but it, I'm just, I was playing devil's advocate because I'm like, that's w what a sincere person trying to help would do. They would go yeah. full speed with whatever they think is right. Now, yeah. maybe you disagree. The vaccines is the right answer, for example. Yeah. Um, and, and then you and him would have to kind of debate through that. Right. But but it just. You see what I mean? Like the, the lo logical conclusion of somebody wanting to go all in on that 
uh, that uh, uh, um, kind of uh, vision for his life, what he wants to accomplish, yeah. Yeah. is what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, like, uh, but at the same time, I'm very open to the idea that um, there's something wrong with vaccines. Like, I'm open to that, right? Because yeah. uh, especially when they're being developed at the speed that people are working at now, talking about mandatory this and that. Um, you know, I'm just, I, I don't know, I'm very wary of people injecting stuff into my body that I don't really understand it. You know, yeah. I mean, I mean in, in, in essence, anything external that's entering can have side effects and that's known, you know, that's yeah, a well-known yeah. thing and that's not something they hide away yeah. from. And, and I'm sure whenever you... the, when I'm, when I was given my son vaccine, I was thinking this vaccine comes in a pack, like, like Panadol, it comes in a box and yeah. on the paper inside the side effects are written. Yeah, right. exactly. And um, they don't hide that, you know, yeah, that's the I'm thing. a bit concerned about it, but then I never really read those side effects. I didn't ask right. for the paper, you know, let me read through it and stuff like that. So I'm, but, I'm just a bit of a sheep, I suppose, in that sense. I mean, for me, I, I look at those side effects and I think, well, let's, 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 let's put it on, let's put it in the real world. These mm. side effects are quite slim chance of them occurring. That's true. If yeah. they, if they do, if they do occur, mm. a lot of them aren't that life threatening, but if they are life threatening, mm. then, in all honesty, I'll be, I know it's hard and I, even I've got kids myself, yeah. I'd have to put it, chalk it down to Qadr Allah. I wouldn't start saying, oh, look what you've done to my children because I know actively what they're trying to do is protect my children from, mm. you know, whether it's measles, whether it's this, whether it's that, you know, um, and that's the world we live in. And <clears throat> but what people... if, for example, what if it <clears throat> hasn't like the, the side effects um, are, are, are kind of downplayed, for example, or uh, there hasn't actually been that much research into them um, and therefore, there are side effects that are unknown, right? Um, what about that? Like, w w what if your son got something because of one of those side effects that are not stated because they were unknown mm. because it's, they didn't really invoice, I investigate? Mean, it's it. difficult. With Wouldn't you be angry that, then? It's difficult with something that's new. Yeah. So if it's like I don't know, if they developed a coronavirus vaccine and that mm. that was very new, yeah. then that's one thing. But yeah. at the same time my this is why i'm a bit like let this thing take its time mm. because people are rushing for this vaccine which then puts pressure on organizations and institutions to rush this thing out without yeah. testing it properly Very that's my thing yeah do you understand but yeah. with with other stuff with vaccines that have existed for years and years and years yeah well there's anecdotal evidence from everybody around me who have taken those and they've they've been fine and that's yeah what, exactly you yeah. know that's what i base my thing on. Yeah, i base yeah. what i like to base my beliefs on not my beliefs but you know, my real life decisions is based on real people that are around me, mm. um, as opposed to God knows whatever this internet thing is providing me, you know? Um, mm. And there's, plenty there's, of a, there's also the third source, which is uh, research. Yes. Mm. I think with researchers, it's not always easy to, to consume or understand. Yeah, that's um, true. And any, and it can be, it depends where you get it from. Like if I went to, I mean, you went to university and you know that there's, when it comes to like journals, when it comes to like research papers and stuff, yeah. they can be heavily criticized, critiqued, sorry. Um, and, and, you know, fact no, check for and sure, stuff man. like that. Yeah. And that is part of the, the university sort of the method, right. Of sharing yeah. knowledge, mm. you know, and even in, in Islam, we've got that times a hundred when it comes to a hadith, when it comes to, you know, the chain of narration and stuff like that. Yeah. So these, the, this institution itself, is, is self-critical and it, and, it, and, it, and it judges itself. But the stuff that you consume that's just from any random Tom, Dick and Harry or coming through WhatsApp, none of that is fact-checked. But yet we, we're yeah. quick to believe that than we yeah, are yeah. because we haven't engaged in that arena to know yeah. what their standards yeah, are, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for, exactly. for, for myself, there are no standards, journal, bro. Huh? There are no standards in that That's world. what I'm trying to say. Yeah. But for individuals that might have never gone to uni or never engaged in these arenas or never been in this sort of subject circle, yeah. they won't know that it takes a while for things to get to that stage. Yeah, Do yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like um, uh, any sort of individual who has an insight into the way a organization works will then appreciate how long it takes to get that end result. But when you don't have any understanding of what, takes, mm. what it gets to that end result, yeah. you automatically think that they're all in it together mm. and they all think the same, etc. Yeah, um, yeah. It was the same yesterday. There's a video floating around of this police officer that um, it's it's quite a bad video, really. He, he's having a go at some guy. We don't know the context, but he's having a go at some guy. Uh, he threatens to make up something to arrest him for. So he said, mm. I don't care who they're going to believe, me or you, sort of thing, right? Mm. Obviously, people shared that with me and it's been around on the internet. Um, now, that already gives an image of what everybody's they think that all police officers are like right um but then 
if you look at the there's like um it was on reddit especially there's like a police subreddit on reddit so a lot full of a lot of police officers they're all slating the guy as well and then someone asked me does this mean that all his arrests that he's ever made will be put into question now like but what they're failing to understand and i wouldn't have known this but because obviously of my engagement in work i know that it's not just the, these processes. So someone to actually get charged and put into court with a crime doesn't just take one individual. Do you understand? So it's, let's say I arrested yeah. you, for example. I put a statement out. I put my statement that says, this is why I arrested him. This is blah, blah, blah. Then but before even doing that, I'd have to take you to a cust to the custody, which is the prison, the police cells, right? But in there, I have to go and basically be a salesman to the, to the sergeant, yeah. to, the, the per to the person in charge. I have to say to him, right, this is what happened. This is the mm. alleged allegation. This is why I felt he needed to be arrested because people don't just get arrested because I felt like it. They have to meet mm. a criteria, yeah. a certain level of criteria that they have to meet. Mm. So I have to literally sell this prisoner to the to the, the supervisor who then authorizes or doesn't authorize. So sometimes, bro, you know, people get arrested. They get taken to the cell and the sergeant's like, no, 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 doesn't need to be arrested. And, and that that itself shows that there's a certain level of, of accountability. Then it has to go to... Um, then it has to be investigated. So the whole thing has to, the whole incident has to be investigated. And then the investigator or the, the supervisor who is in charge of the investigation might decide there's not enough evidence or we're not going to get a prosecution out of this or whatever. Mm. So they get rid of them. But if, if they, if that, if that gets authorized by even the, the police sort of mind or whatever, then it has to go to the crown prosecution service, generally speaking, who are independent from the police mm. who then, organize a prosecution to take things to court then they have to assess and say is this worth taking to court will we get a charge like will this be successful blah 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 mm. then they agree so once they agree then it has to go to court and then the judge and the jury decide etc based on what the evidence is right so going back to what i said initially Absolutely. does that one person's does that one person's uh, action or, or misjudgment or credibility ruin the whole case Mm. depends likely not to it's likely not to because it's not based on one person's decision decision that things happen yeah. and i think that's what we we lack there are, and sounds we, exactly like hadith actually it's, like it's like uh basically with hadith the bias is towards not making it authentic mm. right because any liar in the chain or any unknown person in the chain halas now it's ruined you know, yeah. you can't, yeah. you can't make that, that thing authentic. Same with this. Um, if anybody in that chain doesn't really agree that he should be like, uh, charged or whatever, yeah. then halas, he's kind of yeah. innocent. Right. And so this is my biggest, what I've tried to propagate in, in any sort of, you know, any talks about mistrust in organizations and institutions, all this stuff, what I've always felt should be promoted more and where we should put the money is is in transparency we should put we should be able to have documentaries or media outlets or wherever where things are actually completely transparent the processes are completely transparent mm. and that's what we lack we lack understanding the general public lack understanding about processes and i think we've had years and years and years of institutions and organizations saying listen don't worry like you're not an expert you won't need to know about how we do things it's boring whatever no it should be out there very clear to see and i think if you wanted to look for it you'd find it but to the masses, they're not interested in that because they don't think like that. They don't think about processes. And the reason I say that, I'm not trying to diss the masses, but I know that I was what I was like. I hadn't, I didn't have a clue. I thought it was very black and white. Oh, it goes from this to this, you know, and that's yeah. how things are done. But no, yeah. it's very, very long-winded mm. and very, very- I mean, it takes know. effort, man. Like, it takes effort, like going back to the vaccine thing, like if, I, if I'm serious about, um, uh, you know, be, if I have a serious concern about vaccines, right? And I have mm. kids and all of that then what I actually need to do is invest time in, firstly, I've got to learn how to understand scientific journals, yeah. right? And specifically like the, the medicine or the biology related ones. And then yeah. I've got to read through them and, you know, maybe also look, look for the opinions of experts and yeah. then put that all together and then come up with my conclusion. And I think that's yeah, a responsible yeah. thing to do. Right. But, um, that you've got to kind of go all the way to not be fake because yeah, if yeah. i just don't vaccinate my son or i do vaccinate my son just based on yeah wh whatever like i heard this thing and it seemed bad and i didn't verify it then no you're not going all the way like you've got to go all the way and what is what is our like okay let's forget the dunya for a second let's talk about the dean right mm. so with with the dean we have um what do we have we have obviously we 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 have this 
<clears throat> methodology of critiquing a hadith, whether they're sahih or they're fabricated or whether they're, you know, there's some weaknesses or whatever. But we also have like, when we have a ruling, right? So what's the majority opinion from the mm. ulama, from those who have knowledge on the subject? Okay. Yeah, and if you have, if you have one sort of outlier opinion, yeah. right, that isn't really the, the majority, or what do you do? Do you choose to follow that based on just, just mm. that? Or do you actually critique it? Look at that. Look at the sources. Look what that's going on about. And then judge it based on all the ulama, right? The reason mm. I talk about that is because our deen is one that recommends or promotes that we get our knowledge from those that have the knowledge on that particular subject. So when it comes to, you know, if we have, you know, anything to do with medicine or anything to do with, um, you know, vaccines or whatever, like if you really must find a Muslim doctor and speak to him, right? Find a few Muslim doctors and speak to them. Find Muslim scientists, researchers, whatever, and speak to them. I'm sure there's plenty out there, you know? And if you're struggling, then just put vaccine and put Muhammad or something and you come up with a journal article that has a Muslim <laughs> name, you know? It's just, I, I know it sounds ridiculous, but you've got to apply the same level of standards, um, because you can't just pick and choose. Like we've got outliers all the time that are coming out with wild conspiracy theories. Um, but because they're just that one person and they're saying what we want to hear, then we mm. automatically believe them. Oh, they must be telling the truth. Yeah. Do, do yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, and everything, everything can be spun in context. It's like, um, for example, right now there's, there's a one conspiracy theorist guy or whatever. I don't know what you want to call him. Um, he did a YouTube sort of live stream that was immediately taken down or something. And people yeah, were now yeah. commenting, oh, look, they're trying to shut down the truth. These organizations trying to shut down the truth. But yeah. actually spin, spin that context for a second. Spin that context. They don't want mass hysteria based on fake news. So they're shutting it down to cause less problems. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's, Could be seen that way as well. Yeah. That is the that is the likely, you understand, because they're responsible. Yeah. They're responsible for spreading it for housing these wild views mm. and giving them a platform which then makes their credibility bad right so that's one way of looking at it but people don't want to look like that people want to say that everyone in this organization is bad and they all work together to shut this guy down do you understand what i mean and it's yeah yeah context is lost bro because yeah. everyone lives in this bubble bro mm. <laughs> this bubble that is yeah I think why I get so passionate about it is because I I know what it feels like. I know what it's like to be there, bro. I, mm. I used to, bro, man, I, I was so engrossed in this stuff. And I, like I said, last episode, um, like it was my life. I remember I couldn't walk down, bro. I remember walking down like this high street in, in the city that I'm from thinking like the world was out to get me, bro. Like looking at CCTV cameras, like there was a big organization behind every single camera. I remember walking past a Masonic center in mm. town thinking like oh that's where it's going down like this is it this is the source of all the issues mm. these places bro and i used to think like obviously not not planning this but hypothetically what would it be like if i broke in there what would i see would yeah. i uncover all these truths and, do you understand what i'm trying to say like um and i used to think like that bro i used to think that you know the world is actually all a, a, a construct and we live in a time where everything is just mm. organized so magnificently by these superpowers that it yeah. all falls into place and and no war is real because all wars are against you know all do you what I mean? all orchestrated and blah 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 um realizing that but then realizing later on that actually if you break it down to the bare minimum of what our deen teaches us, it's that Allah is, is all powerful and Allah allows things to happen. Allah is, is the one who allows things not to happen. Um, and when you give this power to people and organizations and these boogeymen that may or may not exist, you're immediately taking that away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and almost like saying like, like these people have, have overcome Allah's plan for the world, which isn't, which is impossible. Do you understand yeah, what I'm trying yeah. to say? So um, ha having said that, bro, Go for it. Well, let's go to like the real life scenario, yeah? Because I know you're, you're, you actually sound like you're very anti uh, alternative um, interpretations of what's mm. happening, right? But I don't think you are. I think you're kind of, you're basically, I think you're on the same, what I'm, what I'm saying basically, right? But mm. let's, but in order to see like where, where, you know, the way we think right now, the way you think, the way I think, where would it take you in real life? Okay. Mm. So for example, the, the example of, you, you know, your son gets something and he may Allah protect him from uh, a vaccine, you know, and it wasn't on the side effects because, you know, they just didn't really invest in researching these side effects too hard. Yeah. Um, what do you do at that point? 
You know, do you say Qadr Allah and get on with your life? Or do you say Qadr Allah, you go after the company, you try and sue them, you try and raise awareness? What, what do you think, think your so, thing would so be? If, so the, the thing is, hmm. you are signing something or you are accepting the risk when you read that. They give you those disclosures for a reason. They yeah. give you those disclosures that say these are the risks for a reason. Yeah. Now, it's different if things are mandatory. I wouldn't know. I'd have to wait and see what that mandatory means. You know, if there's something mandatory, and you can't opt out of it, but then there's mm. side, that's a bit, that's almost like, you know, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. And that's it. That's might be where people are having a bit of an uproar. Mm. But once again, we'll get to that. Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 we have to cross that bridge when we get there, but right now it's not in that situation. Yeah. We're not in that situation. Um, but a lot of these, a lot of the situations we're in are a product of the environment that we're in at the moment where there are these real life risks out there. There are these real life issues out there, uh, uh, you know, medical condition, illnesses, diseases, like we find a better way to combat that, you know, because I'm sure there's people that work in day and night to do so. You know, mm. when you see these adverts for like cancer research and stuff. Okay. Um, and we're like, Oh, why haven't they solved cancer yet? we we'll look how much money we're giving them. Well, it's not something that if you, if you had any understanding of what that illness means, what, what that, you know, what that is and how hard it is to come up with something, then you would understand. But because a lot of people have a shallow understanding of how these things work, they yeah. think we're just pumping money and it's actually going into people's pockets, you know, and, and not that there isn't any cases of, of money getting misspent or whatever, but the, the actual goal of this organization is to essentially cure cancer. But, you know, people will say, Oh no, they're not because uh, it's, it's, it's for their benefit and they can make money of charging us, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I'm not going to say that, that medicine and, and pharmaceuticals is a big booming industry. I'm not going to say that it isn't, but at the same time, find me a different solution. You know, and I'm not talking about like bro science medicine. <laughs> I'm mm. talking about, um, you know, real, real life applications and stuff. But at the same time though, the best way to, to safeguard yourself against all of this stuff is by living a healthy lifestyle is by doing, you know, mm. having a bit more control over your life, but we don't mm. want to do that, bro. We want to, we want to have our cake and eat it. We want to live we want to have our McDonald's lives. And exactly. Not have we want to have keep, exactly. We want to, <laughs> but do you understand what I'm trying to say? Like we do yeah. things to ourselves and then we blame other people for not solving it for us. Despite yeah. the fact that I mean, we make a big deal about the things that uh, where other people harmed us and mm. we kind of downplay the areas where we harmed ourselves, isn't it? Yeah, bro. And if you, That's, if you looked yeah, after normal. yourself, mm. if you looked after yourself, then you wouldn't, you wouldn't be in a position where you'd have to, you know, and I'm, I'm not saying that obviously people, people contract diseases and all sorts for no fault of their own. Right. But we've got a lot of, um, you know, we've got a lot of issues where things are self-inflicted, bro. Mm. Um, and, and that's what we need to control first and foremost. Mm. I think, <clears throat> I think what, what another issue is that we give ourselves a lot of self-importance um, to the point where it's like this thing with like data collection or with, um, you know, these agendas because they want to do X, Y, Z to humans or whatever. Um, it's almost like we give ourselves to this value, like, oh, if they gain access to me or my info, whatever, then uh, that's what they want. They're desperate for my, if anything, they're desperate for our money, right? Like you can see that exchange quite clearly. If they wanted our money, then they can benefit from our money. But them benefiting off, I don't know, like benefiting off other things that are a bit more vague doesn't really affect us that much. So why do we give ourselves so much self-importance? Mm. We thinking like we think like us as individuals are what they're after mm. instead of our what we can give them in terms of mm. money, etc. Mm. Um, and I think a lot of that comes w with this whole sort of um, maybe very extreme element of like. Um, when you get into like the dark sort of side of conspiracies, where it's like the occult side of it, you know, the, the Satan worship inside of it, the mm. enslavement of mankind side of it, you know, when actually these are a lot of just organizations and people behind organizations that just want some extra dollar in their pocket, you know, but so, so how would you react, bro? To my son or my yeah. child getting ill? Yeah. My um, mm. I'm, I was having this conversation with my wife earlier when she gave me a hypothetical. I said, I don't do hypotheticals. <laughs> I yeah. just deal with situations as mm. they come. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't know, bro. I wouldn't know how I'd react. You know, mm. I would be upset, no doubt. But at the same time, um, I, would, I would understand that these are things that happen. And at the end of the day, bro, a lot of it is Qadr Allah. It's not something that um, someone has maliciously infected my child with some sort of disease. Like, I don't believe that. Yeah. I would never believe that I went to hospital, right? Yeah. And um, they chose to infect him through giving him this vaccine. Like that doesn't, 
that doesn't make sense to me in the slightest. No, no, if there was like an unknown side effect. Of course, was a, the, on the ground level, the nurses and doctors wouldn't be course. aware of it. Okay? Of course. But I'm and saying it, uh, the company, for example, <clears throat> that developed the vaccine, um, if they just kind of, this happens, bro, people are lazy, yeah? They, yeah. they could spend, let's say, a million dollars researching more thoroughly the, the side effects, or they yeah. could not, and they decided yeah, to yeah. save that million dollars, yeah. right? So it, it depends on that evidence. I mean, once again, it goes back to what we were saying mm. about um, the methodology of coming up with a vaccine. Like me and you wouldn't, wouldn't know that, but yeah, I'm sure yeah. those that are in that field would know how many hoops mm. you have to run through to get mm. that out there. Yeah. You know, why is it that, okay, how many articles do we see of like, it could be anything, it could be cancer. Let's say hypothetically cancer. Oh, so new drug has, has reversed cancer in mice, right? So people are like, oh, come on and hit me up with it. You know, it's working. Do you understand? That's what people do. And then you hear, you hear about those sort of examples, but then you don't hear anything for ages before human trials. Like you never, yeah, yeah. So that, that in itself gives you insight on how long it takes for it to get to human trials, mm. bro. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's we don't why, talk like that. That's why if something happened to my, any of my, you know, my kids with the vaccines, I, I don't think I would regret it because I would say to myself that um, you know, I, I, I make dua for their protection always, mm. and it happened anyway. So, you know, Allah wrote it and we, you know, we try to be pleased with Allah's, um, yeah. uh, you know, will. And I would say, given the information I had at hand, I still probably made the best decision. Mm. Right. Uh, and that's how I would probably and deal also, with it. Also, okay, what else is it going to do? Like, okay, as Muslims, yeah, what are we going to do? We want money off them. Like, is that going to change anything? Does that well, solve you, the situation? You could, you, could go, go you, the route, you could go down the route of... Uh, making other people aware of the, of the potential side effects that yeah, there is have that. not been kind of uh, promoted. And that's or... fine. And you know what? That's, that's, that's perfectly acceptable. Yeah, and that's, that's an acceptable enough, thing to do. Yeah. To, to, to come from a balanced approach where saying, hey, listen, this has got, you know, pushing for research into this side effect so you can make a better vaccine that doesn't have this side effect. That's brilliant. That's, yeah. that's what should be done. And that's yeah. how things change anyway. And unfortunately, yeah. a lot of the time, things change because things go wrong. That's mm. how we learn. We learn from yeah. failures and mistakes. Um, if I had found out, however, that it was through someone's incompetence or laziness or someone cutting corners that that had happened, that's a different story. Mm. You know, that is a different story. Mm. But, and that happens in any, forget vaccines, that happens in any sort of organization where, yeah. um, you know, I'm, uh, you know, my, I don't know if she, my wife, someone in her family was um, uh, in Algeria, I think it was, they went under general anesthetic. It was a child. I think yeah. it was her cousin or someone, general anesthetic. But I can't remember if whoever administered it either did the wrong dosage or whatever. And unfortunately, the child died. But that was someone in her family. Now, that is a different story because general anesthetic itself yeah. isn't really the issue. It's that whoever administered it caused yeah, a mess up. Or you know, subhanAllah, I've about. heard of that now. I heard of somebody dying. Uh, they, they were under, I don't know if it was general anesthetic, some kind of anesthetic in Egypt di died mm. from it. Yeah, um, my mm. cousin's husband in Algeria as well. He he was had some kind of surgery, and since that day, they must have messed up the dose, and he was basically like another person, right? And he he lived out he he died this year, Allah um, yarhamu, and he he lived out his last few years of his life just like a, I don't know, just like not a normal person, you know, just not mm. talking, not mm. able to think, like just completely messed up. And this is from incompetence or, or laziness. Exactly. Or, you know. and, and what we should push for, what we should always push for is, is this element of accountability, this element of um, yeah. independent bodies uh, judging. And, 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 and as much as it's difficult to be in those institutions and have this independent sort of thing, you know, always judging you and stuff, it's good for the public, bro. And I yeah, think yeah. This is what, you know, a lot of people would fail to recognize how important these independent institutions are they think that they're all doing it together when you know they're not they're really not like i i know even internally like even like uh professional standards departments internally where i work they're almost seen as like the enemy mm. which is good which is good yeah, yeah. because it, it it then gives you as a as a you know someone working it gives you the the feeling that oh I, I can't cock up because if they find out or whatever then i'm, I'm done for my job's gone yeah, yeah. which is good for the public bro it might feel bad for me but it's actually what the public need and deserve yeah. is, is for harsh the attitude that we want is exactly where you're annoyed by it personally, 
but as an overall benefit for the society, you're like, yeah, that makes sense. Definitely. That be- definitely attitude. makes sense. You know, I know that I'm one wrong decision away from losing my job. At yeah, all yeah. Times. I know that, you yeah. know, and I might hate that and I might be scared yeah. of that. Or you're one wrong so- decision away from ruining someone else's life. As exactly. Well. Yeah. Exactly. And this is, this is it. And, you know, I think at least here, we're very fortunate to have that in certain organizations and institutions. We don't yeah. have that everywhere else. We don't have yeah. that in mm. where countries we come from, you know, and that's what we need to push for. And, you know, the fact that we've still got Russia, you know, we've still got bribery and stuff in the streets, bro, from authorities and figures. That's what needs to be stamped out. They're, these yeah. are the directions that we need to go. And mm. these are things, like I said, like ultimately, Mind Heist has always been um, a discussion where ultimately we always conclude on, well, actually, the Dean has solved this for us. So if we just follow the Dean correctly, then we'd be fine. You know? Yeah. The dean I suppose solved- there, is, there is the discussion, for example, about Rushway, yeah, uh, bribery. Mm. It's like, how do you deal with it, right? Because you could say, look, anybody top down yeah new president whatever um anybody caught getting involved in bribery we're gonna like do some mad punishment right you could do that you could do education so the the thing is how do you do it but i think the problem we're dealing right now is there is no um will from pretty i mean uh, yeah the average person probably you know who's not involved in it yeah they want to get rid of it but when it comes to the people benefiting from it which is a lot of people you know around, you know closer to the top of course um they have no will right so it's yeah. not really on the top but, of the agenda we live in a we live in a time now especially mm. in this and you know let's talk about the, the arab world or north africa or whatever because that's what we know about we live in a time where getting message out a message out there is is instant and it's so accessible and i think that's a blessing from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you can use social media as a tool to do so and i think a lot of governments have uh, at least a lot especially locally they've shifted their the way of dealing with things especially since the arab spring bro because they know that they're literally one recording away from getting exposed do you know what i mean which mm. which actually forces the hand of those above them to get rid of them or to do something whatever um and, and that's power to the people, bro. And I, I'm not, I'm not saying that you know this is always the answer, but I'm saying that it just shows that we we do have access to certain things. Mm. We do have ways of getting stories out there now. Mm-hmm. Um, if I was to, I don't know, be stopped and someone starts asking me for money and I had this, like I had my phone recording and I could hear him do so, you know, and I got his badge number and whatever, you know, I could pay the guy the money and I could go leak that story out. Do you understand? Mm. Um, would that put me in in danger? Yeah, it might do. But at the same time, it's 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 this notion of things don't change unless people make sacrifices. But yes. you know, people don't. I'm not saying that I can make that sacrifice. You know, maybe I can't. Mm. But I'm sure there will be people out there that will, and they believe in that strongly to that yeah. effect. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, bro, what about the scenario now where in six months vaccines are mandatory in a way? Um, if they're mandatory, let's say no. They, let's say it's not done like that. Let's say it's strongly recommended and to the level where if you don't get it you know for you your your wife your kids this and that then you're gonna lose out some big privilege like i don't know let's think what could it be it'd probably be schooling wouldn't it it'd be like for example no access to schools nhs so it would be and like, maybe jobs or something like that and that, that's what it would be it would be like if it was a school thing because this is what i i saw a headline i didn't read the article but it said it'd be mandatory in schools if i didn't vaccinate my kids then they wouldn't i wouldn't see them being allowed in the school okay because i mean i don't see that as a huge sacrifice but would you would you take that but for some people that is you? you know yeah 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 for some people that would be you know and and, mm. and once again it, it depends how you view it but um at the same time i would say i would i would put there's a certain element of trust that i give to the experts you know uh, and it's i'm not saying that i'm not i'm not skeptical at all but you need to have a, a sort of healthy level of skepticism mm. um it goes back to the thing again like if i believe that this vaccine was dangerous mm. um then that means every single kid in that year would would be dead do you know what I mean? Like everyone, like the majority of people that have had this vaccine, the world would just. Mm. Well, let's no, but let's There'll say be bigger problems. Let's say the vaccine isn't uh, proven to be dangerous, right? It's just that it's only been from from inception to production has only been one year. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But once again, to get to that point, it'd have to jump through so many hoops. So if it was mandatory, bro, yeah, I'd probably end up doing it. And I don't, and I, I, it's easy for me to sit here and maybe give like a whole sort of spiel about, oh, you know, I wouldn't, and I would, you know, look into it. Mm. Blah, blah. The likelihood is I would do it, and the majority of people would do it. <laughs> so okay, what would you aspire to do? I would read, you know, I'd read up on it more and stuff like that. And if there was reports, credible reports of side effects and stuff like that, then then I would promote discussions and, and mm. promote, you know, wh- whether it's petitions, whatever it is, to try and get mm. more research done onto it. And I think research on it will continue, bro. Just like research on stuff that we've yeah, yeah. We solved years ago. Will it's just that when you take, once you've taken it, um, the research won't help you, will it? But what is the thing is, what is the alternative? I don't take it, and then what? That's suffer the consequences of yeah, whether exactly. it's the illness or whether it's the, um, the, 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 I don't know what you want to call it, the exclusion from certain benefits or certain, you know, yeah. uh, stuff from my children. Like, what, what do I do then? You know, what do I do then? Mm. I, think, I think I would lean more towards not taking it, man. But then what? One, it depends on the consequences. It does depend heavily, of course, because the there's always the, like you said, like there's the hypothetical no way. And then there's the real life, no way. Um, yeah, exactly. and, and I just think everybody needs to kind of be self-aware and, and kind of pre-think these things, right? Because in the pressure of the moment, a lot of people, um, what's the word? They, they uh, what's the word? They kind of collapse under the pressure, right? But, mm. but um, if you have thought ahead of time that this is a line I won't cross, then I think making the sacrifice will be easier. So you kind of have to think of that. Bro, I just feel like uh, I don't actually, if, if a vaccine was to come out in six months and everyone's supposed to take it and stuff, it's not like I would believe there's something wrong with it. I would just feel like there's a, who knows, there's a 50% chance there's something really majorly wrong with it because it's only been in production for one year or it's only been you know, research or whatever for one year. Whereas as far as I think I know, as far as I know, it takes like usually 10 years or whatever to produce vaccines usually and put them through mm. all the thing. Mm. All and the even hoops, then, bro. bro, I'm also quite aware of how uh, un- unadvanced uh, humans are in this area, right? For example, yeah. I came across this article, it was on BBC, and it said that I th- maybe this was a UK-based thing. Two-thirds of scientists were not able to replicate studies in a field right yeah, yeah, um, yeah which means that somebody did a study um and then they came up with a conclusion based on their findings and then somebody copied the exact methodology and got different results yeah yeah, yeah right yeah, which means yeah. that the first one holds kind of no weight yeah and yeah. and people are those are the exact studies where people are saying it's scientifically proven yeah of course of course so of i'm course. i when it comes to scientifically proven i'm like uh you know calm down it's the same, but at the same time, we have no other choice but to to take the means that we've got and to yeah to basically have a, a certain level of tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa taala when it comes to these mm. things. You have to tie your camel anywhere you can to leave yourself vulnerable to these elements. Is a different story. Like you could say, oh well, you know what? I'm going to risk getting the illness, right? I'm going to risk getting it. But you, when you get that illness, you know exactly why you got it. Do you understand? You know exactly why it could have been avoided. Would you be kicking yourself? Then I don't know. But mm. if you were to get this, if you get the vaccine and nothing happened, that's one thing. If you were to get the vaccine and then you got a side effect, that's another thing. If you wanted to get anything, you have to see how you would feel in yeah, all yeah, these yeah. scenarios. Exactly. Yeah. If you wanted to do anything and then you got the, the illness that it's meant to be, you know, vaccinated against. That's, you know, imagine you being the one, the one of the few people that got the coronavirus after there was a vaccine from it and everybody ended up with it. And then you know, you, different, yeah end up having to go into mm. ICU, you could end up dying or whatever it yeah. is. Um, and you know that it, you could have probably it, avoided it. you got to make decisions based on maybe two things, yeah? Um, avoiding regret, yeah? And getting to Jannah, basically. Yeah. So when you're thinking, you know, should I take the hit? Should I do something I'm not comfortable with? If you think of those two things, you know, would I regret it in the future if this happens or that happens? And then would taking this get me closer to Jannah or further? You know, this kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it's difficult when it's like this hypothetical because it kind of depends what uh, the consequences are. But um, mm. what do you think, bro? Because I, I'm quite, I just think it makes perfect sense. Um, and there is, you, you can't say there's proof, but you can say there's a precedent that the whole world, and especially the more um, kind of advanced 
countries in terms of economies and technology and stuff are basically moving towards the China model. That's what it seems like, where you've got the whole social credit system. If you're a naughty boy, we're going to take points away. And basically, the more compliant you are with a few people's kind of policies at the top and rules at the top, as the more compliant you are with what they're saying, the more points you have, the more rewards and privileges you have. And the more you're you know, rebellious or um, dissenting, the more you're going to lose out on those things until, until yes, you do get, you do get people who are not allowed to use trains like in China, you're not allowed to use um, planes or take flights, maybe not allowed to leave the country, maybe not allowed uh, to get to certain universities or their kids are not. So what do you, do you think that's like quite possible? Because I I do, right? Because I think when, when the technology gets to the place it is now, it's far too tempting for a government not to use it because my, my view is if I was in the government, I try and put myself in the, in the view, uh, in, the, in the you know, shoes of someone trying to govern a country. And I think the way these people see it is they're a bit detached from everyday life. Okay. Um, they live a certain lifestyle that maybe the majority of people don't live. And they kind of have these ideas that they, they truly believe they're for the better of society. And then sometimes people just, are just dumb or people oh, yeah, rebel bro. or like, bro, people like, don't get it and they rebel. And then you're you like, come me, on, like, can't I, if I could just force them to listen, I would do that. Yeah. And that's when the technology you, comes in. If you said to me, um, you know, what do you think about facial recognition cameras? All right. The work side of me thinks that'd make my life so much easier. Mm. Do you know what I mean? There's so many things that we could just solve overnight with that. You know what I mean? We wouldn't have to waste time looking for people that have done X, Y, Z. Um, and then the other side of me is like, oh, but people are skeptical. But I, I struggle now because of my position. And I'll say I'm biased. I will say I'm biased. I'll admit that. Yeah, we because I struggle it. seeing the negative, the negative side of stuff like that now. Mm. Because I'm just like, oh, they've got a photo of my face. Well, they already have that. I've got a passport. Um, but then they've... But, actually they've got all these recognition cameras that can find a criminal like that or find someone. And when it comes to like what you said about getting rewarded for being a good boy or a naughty boy, what does naughty boy look like? Like, what does that mean? Does that mean that uh, criminals? Does that mean uh, people that are wanted? Does that mean people like, what does that look like? I don't know. We've got, we've got something like that now when it comes to like credit scores, you know, your inability to get out loans or buy something on credit or whatever it is. If you've got a low yeah. credit score, um, and that's like a little taste of that. Uh, mm. One would argue that we wouldn't have a credit score whatsoever because we don't engage in that sort of stuff. So maybe mm. we are locked away from certain. And things, also, but- borrowing money is not like a fundamental kind of essential need. Mm-hmm. Mm. But it is a taste of what people people being deprived of what they want. You know, yeah. we're locked away yeah. from certain aspects. The, um, the thing I fear in this, I like don't I know said, I how. Do think, yeah. Go on. Rob. Yeah, it, it was going to be. Uh, in relation to our deen it's our ability to practice a religion that's the issue that it's is whether, a big issue yeah that is what it is it's like maybe now we've got you know a, a government that sort of not facilitates but allows us to go to the masjid and stuff whatever that's not an issue right so if that was to happen now then it's not an issue but if that was to then change and the dynamic suddenly being so for example let's say china china banning mosques or banning prayers or banning muslims in yeah. general then being a naughty boy is also being a Muslim. Exactly. Then you, that's, that's, you know, that's the, the nightmare. And these, these systems, when they get put in place, there's no going back. Yeah, so, what, so although I'm a law-abiding citizen today, I don't know where the law, what direction the law is going in in order for me to you know, be, yeah. be uh, comfortable that I will be Perfect. a good boy later. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. Like you could, you could yeah, people's opinions or people's dynamics change completely so but like you said you're right the technology will always be there it's whoever whoever's got their hand over it is who changes you know and the policies are what changes yeah. and public perception is what changes mm. so um yeah it's kind of catch 22 bro but <sighs> at that point bro i was talking to my brother you know yesterday about this and you know the, for example the even the the whole 5g rfid thing okay uh, you know 5g okay one of the big benefits of 5g because i'm into technology right so yeah. 5g one of the benefits is that you know like uh, with 4g let's say in a square kilometer with one cell tower maybe it could connect to ten thousand devices yeah. beyond that it starts messing up 
But let's yeah. say 5G allows it to connect to, you know, 100,000 devices in that same area. What that means now is that you can, then, then you get into the IoT kind of uh, place, right? Uh, internet of things where, yeah. you know, my, my phone could connect to internet, my keyboard, my car, um, and I could, you know, I could connect, I could be connected to it, right? With a, either a, a neuro, neuro link, whatever, connect to my brain, or maybe just a chip, which kind of would track maybe my blood type and my ID yeah. kind of thing, my location. Um, but it, it, that, you see this kind of technology, I think it leans towards, it, it inherently leans towards a power concentrating in a smaller place than a larger place, right? Yeah. So for example, AI. AI, you could say, is powerful in anyone's hands right? And um, me now, I could create an AWS account, I could start using AI. Okay. The difference is the, the reason it's biased towards big, powerful governments or, or co companies is because AI requires a ton of data. And me, mm -hmm. as an average random guy, I don't have a ton of data. So now I don't really have much use for AI. Yeah. Um, so I just think um, AI, 5G, these kind of things, they, they lean, they're inherently leaning towards um, small amount of people, having more and more power over large numbers of people. Hmm. And at that point, that's what I was saying to my brother at that point, what, you know, what would the ulama say at this point? You know, when they, when they find out that, um, for example, you know, uh, we, in UAE, we've got ID cards. Yeah. Everyone has to have an ID card. Uh, now that ID card, I don't think you, you get tracked with it or anything, but let's say it, it could. Yeah. At that point, you know, at what point, um, does it become kind of allowed or whatever to rebel against this? And I'm not talking about where I live because where I live, it's not even my country kind of thing. So I feel like if I don't like it, I should just leave. But what if you're in your own country um, mm. and these things start getting put in place? And I thought, you know, the way I think the anime would deal with this is you're going to have a group where they're like, look, this has gone too far. Yeah. Um, they're going to start. It, there's just too big of a chance that it's going to lead to people being not allowed to practice their religion and all of this. And, you know, you need to, you need to rebel in whatever way. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. And I think that'll be a small group, but then the, the larger group will be people, which will be just, it's just a reflection of the average person, which is uh, people who are kind of comfortable the way things are. And generally people just prefer status quo and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they'll just say, you know, you got to follow the law of the land and, you know, maslaha, you know, the, the benefits of this and, you know, and the, the downsides of rebelling and all that. But this is the question, like, what is the red line, bro? Like when we get to where China is now, is that the red line? Is there a red line before that? Or is China not even the red line? I suppose it goes back to the, um, goes back to the fundamental principles of hijra if you can make hijra to another country to allow yourself to practice your religion so if you're stuck say i don't know hypothetically the uk or any other muslim country or any you know i mean any place in the world where you can't practice your religion then you try and make hijra if you can't make hijra then you do your best in that situation yeah because at the end of the day as as as, as shallow as it is to just put a bullet in this topic it's the dunya at the end of the day isn't it you know and it's a set period of time that you're going to have struggling with this specific issue you do your best with what you've got and the ability you can and then you die and then you're free because of this dunya is a prison for the believer anyway so it doesn't yeah. matter what kind of prison it can go from like an open air prison to a maximum security prison it's always a prison it's always has been you know and i think i think maybe we fall into this whole longevity thing about the dunya that we think you know oh what happens in a hundred years when you know technology is this advanced and that they're tracking this and that and this and that well actually it doesn't matter because the dunya is finite anyway one thing they can't stop which you know i hope they can't stop but one thing they can't stop is me from dying you know they can't stop me from <laughs> but you understand what i mean like yeah. that's one thing that they can't control you know and they never will be able to is yeah. me from dying and being free from it you know and they what they can do with my assets what they can do with what's, what's in your heart as well yeah you know, your exactly and that, although that, your, your mind could get manipulated maybe but yeah definitely but this is why like you know i mean we we, we we've got a hadith about the end times we've got times where even la ilaha illallah will be so lost and forgotten that people will say oh my ancestors used to say it you know but that'll be enough to get people into jannah so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already given us yeah. given us an example of what if things reach a point where you know the dean is nothing but a few words that we can't remember yeah you know that but isn't even isn't those that people attitude that you're kind of uh, explaining now isn't that if i use that apply that attitude to 
you know, uh, 18, uh, you know, 19, whatever, 1950 Algeria. Yeah. And I would yeah. say, okay, we've been colonized by France. Um, it's only the dunya. Let's just, you know, let's just uh, get on well with our no, you know, I, masters. I, I would say that example is a bit different, but Allah Alam, I don't know what the discourse was during that time, but if it's a if it's a battle between Muslims and non-Muslims and you're getting oppressed from an out, that's you know that's a clear cut thing right there. And that I don't think that the um, the Maslaha Mefsada thing really plays when things are that clear cut. I think it gets a bit murky when it's other issues where it's like almost inter politics kind of thing where it's like Muslims amongst each other. You know, we talk about like the fitna between. Um, you know, after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi died and the fitna Absolutely. between um, the companions of the Prophet or the, the followers of it, you know, and, and in that time, would you advocate any sort of inter-policy thing? Like you wouldn't, I think you'd advocate trying to keep the peace as much as you possibly could. Um, when it's something as clear cut as like, almost like a foreign invader, it's it's quite, it's quite difficult. And I think once yeah. again, it's not, I'm not in a position to make that discussion. You'd have to follow the ulama on that one. Um, mm. But this is what I mean. When it gets complicated, when it gets beyond you and your ability to discern what right and wrong is, right, that's when you have to leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you, you, you can't, you don't want to risk. I mean, yes, you could, you, could, you could do something and hope that Allah rewards you for your intention. You could. Mm. But at the same time, you could also do something and have this fear that you've done the wrong thing or it, would, it is what leads you to to um, hellfire i mean at the same time we've got guidance on this in the dean we've got guidance about i can't remember what what it's what the circumstances but there was a hadith i i remember about like just get yourself away like up in the mountains and bite hard on a tree just to get away from it all like when the yeah. fitna gets that much yeah, yeah and that's my that's my policy with it it's like if i can get away from it and not have to to act because i don't know who's right and wrong then I'll get away from it. You know, mm. I want to free my hands from yeah. this mess because yeah. it's too messy for one person to understand. You yeah. know, and you see that now. You see all that in Syria. You see that in Iraq. Things are so messy, bro. You've got Muslims coming over. You've got non-Muslims coming over. You've got people where you don't even know if they're Muslim or not. Do you know what I mean? And they're all at it, and you just think, who do I? You know, if I if I in my bubble side with this person, then I don't know what that bubble is doing all over the place. You know, so bro it's just too much and it's too much for one person to judge yeah. it which is why it goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you go back to making dua back to having tawakkul back to praying and worshiping the best way you can making the best decision you can which sometimes mm. is doing nothing at all and avoiding it all yeah you know there's definitely the example of ashab al-kahf who mm. you know they were they were in a society of mushrikeen must have been quite an anti tawhid society mm -hmm. and Whatever happened, whatever the exact circumstance was, they deemed it fit to leave that place, right? And yeah. go to the cave, right? Um, and I guess for us, it's like being able to judge when that, you know, when that line is crossed and that we bro, need to make that decision. Exactly. Right? I mean, imagine this test, bro. Imagine a lot. Imagine you live. Let's talk. Let's take you, for example. Yeah. You're a Muslim. You've got a, you've got, you've got a child. You've got a wife. You're a Muslim family and you, you love Allah and you love his messenger. Okay. And that is what Allah sees in you. Okay. Let's imagine that's what Allah sees in you. Right. And then you live in a society where it's all anti, right. And it's suddenly you're being put at risk. So Allah to test that you love him, he says, I, I want you to get rid of your dunya for, for my sake, for Allah's sake. Right. So go run. You know, all you have left on you is your deen. And that's enough for you to get into paradise. You talk about wanting to get into paradise all this time. Okay, prove it. Like, prove that you want, you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. Prove that you want this religion. That's the only thing I'm going to leave for you. That's the only thing you've got left. Hold on to it and you can have it. You can have the reward that comes with that. Do you understand? Mm. These are things like, you know, it's, it's like the, the beginning verses of sort of like Ankabut, you know. We think that we're going to be in this life and not be tested. This is the reality. This dunya is a test. And when things like this happen we just think, oh this is this isn't right this can't have happened why would Allah test me with only giving me or only leaving me my deen as as, as sort of um the only thing left that I can have well actually this has happened in the past like you said Ashab al -Kef, we've got examples of it in the past we've got you know Musa alayhi salam for example getting banished from his city running going mm -hmm. away we've got Ibrahim alayhi salam being thrown in the fire just for his one belief when everyone was against him we've got examples over examples over examples of prophets that came with a message and they were on their own completely banished from these world, from these lands or from these uh, communities and societies like again and again and again so 
if it happened to the prophets, why can't it happen to us? We say we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. And it goes back to what I said last episode, I think it was, where we have, we're way too comfortable, bro. We've lived in such comfort mm. that to think that we could get to a point where society would kick us out is, is, is abnormal. No way can that happen. No, it's happened. And it's happened way before us. And it can happen way after us. And it can happen right now. And mm. it's no surprise, you know? Yeah. So when something when worldwide like this happens... Being, uh, sacrificing becomes more difficult. Yeah. Exactly. We're comfortable, bro, because, like, I'm living in... Look, like, I'm living... He got that. By the he got that I've got that flashy, I've got my couch. flashy background, bro. Bro, trust me. You got like, the mind this, heist look, poster, bro. Look at all this. Look at this baraka, bro. Like I, I you know, mind heist. We we ordered that. It came through. Like click and collect, bro. This is the life we live in. So when pandemics happen, when crisis happen, when world wars happen, we're we're like, whoa, this ain't right. There's no way this can happen. I'm comfortable. I live in the West. Bro, I'm comfortable. I've got everything I want. How could I, how could this happen to me? You know, how can this happen to me? But it's happening to people all across the world, you know, and suddenly when it hits home, you know, we send charity all the time, bro. We send a charity every Ramadan. We send a charity every month, every week uh, to Syria, to Palestine, to this, to that, to this, to that. These things are normal. Like speak to anyone from Palestine right now. This is normal life for them. What you're talking about, you know, these issues that we have that we're thinking might happen to us one day. You know, this has been happening to them for years and they carry on and they live their life and they hold on to their deen and they're firm with it. So, because we live in the West, because we're comfortable, we're like, no, 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 can't happen to us. There's no way we need to do something about. Well, mm. this is dunya, bro, it's, mm. and that's what I have to remind myself. You know? mm. So I have to and in, remind myself. In Palestine, you have, bro, you you literally have some women who say, "I'm gonna have as many sons as possible to give them to the cause," yeah. And then you have the other side where mm. some people, uh, maybe you know, quoting Maslaha or whatever, they'll go work with the Israeli army. You know, so there's there's a there's always an interpretation to be made. There's always a uh, a decision, you know, to be made. And I suppose, mm. you know, something like being tracked, like every let's say not a chip in me, but let's say my ID card, uh, you know, tracks my location. Yeah. That is something where it's like it, there's no direct harm I can see coming from it. It's just potential harm, right? So mm. it's very difficult to say that is too far, I'm going to do hijrah now. Yeah, it's, it's difficult, yeah, yeah. but yeah. I think ultimately, because these areas are so unclear, that's where, yeah. uh, you know, like Allah says, I think it's in Surah Al-Taghaban, uh, that uh, no, no um, Calamity will afflict someone except by the will of Allah and whoever believes in Allah Allah will guide his heart Right Allah will mm -hmm. guide his heart now. That's interesting because it's like whoever believes in Allah Allah will guide him Right, you know, sure if you believe you're already guided, but uh, this guiding of the heart. is like uh, Making those good decisions perhaps, you know mm -hmm. making that right uh, just intuition, right? Basically, because you're not going to have the facts. You might have access to a fatwa. Mm -hmm. You're just mm -hmm. going based on what feels right. And that's maybe when Allah guiding your heart will mm -hmm. guide you to that right decision. Mm. It's, it really does put stuff into perspective with stuff like this, because now I start thinking about what is it that I want in life? Oh, it's just more dunya. That's all it could be. You know what I mean? All it could be is more dunya. So when it comes to the stuff that actually matters, when it comes to increasing my knowledge and deen, when it comes to, you know, trying to attain Allah's pleasure, those are things that we're, we're it's, it's kind of fleeting, you know, we don't really think too much about them. But the moment our dunya is threatened, oh, we can't do this, we can't do that, or do you mm. know what I mean? We're going to get trapped. But it's intertwined, isn't it? Because it your freedom, like your freedom to, you know, whatever, go to McDonald's is maybe the same freedom but, to go to the masjid. But what, what I'm saying is we didn't care until the freedom was gone. Like look okay, at now it, people, yeah, yeah. people are talking now about how they miss the masjid, how we didn't have, you know, we can't go to do tarawih. There's people that are talking about it. Like they, they didn't go anyway. You know, I know that I could have gone a lot more than I, than I do, you know, and now suddenly that the masjid is closed. I'm like, oh, I wish I could go to the masjid, right? Mm. Like we don't take advantage of the stuff mm. we have available to us. So when Allah tests us with it, then we think, oh, we're up in arms, you know, imagine how much good we would do if we actually fulfilled the stuff that we needed to do when we were told to do so. Um, mm. The moment it's taken away, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has taken it away from, you know, that, that happens to people with health. It happens to people like, you know, there's, 
oh, it happens to, I don't know what that notification was. It happens to people who lose their health, bro, who can't walk anymore, who wish they could pray, you know, yeah. who wish they could. It's, it's, it's something that is, you know, it's the son of Allah to, to test us by taking things away and, and, and testing our deen and testing our conviction. You know, how, how many times has it been that, you know, when I'm happy and things are going well, I don't remember Allah that much, but the moment things go bad, I'm suddenly worshiping harder than I ever have and making dua harder yeah. than I ever have. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's the reality. This is what all, it's all mm. about. All these signs, yeah. all these tests, it's about reminding us of what we're here for, what the purpose yeah. is. You know? Yeah, yeah. And that's, ultimately, that's the goal, bro, is to feel ready to die, to feel like, mm. yeah, I, yeah, I did. I did make a, I sincerely put a good shift in, man. Yeah, you know yeah, these yeah. 50 years or whatever i was alive i put a good shift in and yeah. you know ask allah to give us that man because and i feel like the more comfortable you get in life the harder it will be to say that really um, yeah. and when you yeah. think of you know the people we look up to today and there are plenty more that we don't know of yeah but like if you think of was it um ibn baz who went blind yeah I think yes. I think yes, was, yes 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 I think it was been birds who went blind. Now, yeah, uh, I heard that 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 was due to the heavy reading he did. Okay, oh, okay. Uh, but I'm not sure about that. But a, a clearer, okay, a more clear cut example is, uh, you know, Mujahideen who gave their lives. Some like you know Khattab, uh, you know, he was fighting in Chechnya and stuff. Bro, he lost his hand. You know, his hand got blown off, and he, you know, put his life to the side. Uh, Abdurrahman al Sumait. Uh, the Kuwaiti who spent, he was a doctor and he was very wealthy as well. He just spent his whole life uh, giving people health care, you know, p poor people um, all over the world. Um, so there are so many examples of people that they bro like, they just, um, I guess, in, in letting go of comforts, they were able to put in a more of a shift, I suppose, for Allah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and nothing. There's nothing more distracting than comfort, bro. Nothing more distracting than comfort and entertainment, and you know. And I say that as a guilty pie. I say that as being guilty of that myself. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of the stuff that has stopped me doing anything meaningful in life is the idea of of discomfort. You know, yeah. um, you know, like when I spoke about his maybe moving to Tunisia one day and stuff. The only thing that's stopping me, you know, I wasn't really too scared of like my ability to practice the Dean because when I weighed it up, I'm like, there's more Dean there, you know? Yes. I might not be able to have a big beard or, or be very open and vocal, but in terms of my personal ability to pray, my personal ability to fast, my personal ability to be surrounded by Muslims, it's way more there than it will be here. Right. But actually when I dug deeper, it was actually the comforts that I was thinking of missing, you know, mm. my vast internet, you know, my ability to go to certain, you know, locations in the UK, whether that's restaurants or whatever, my ability to play video games or whatever it is, my ability to get the newest, this, the newest, that, the, the films, the movies, whatever you want to call it. Like that's actually what was, you know, playing my mind. And mm. I had to, actually admit that and then i realized you know what going over there and having a bit of discomfort is actually better for my soul and better for me as a muslim than it is being here being lackadaisical mm. because that's the reality you know um and this is it bro this is this comfort bro has become the biggest enemy and you know wasn't i'm sure there was a hadith about um you know about the, uh, when all the nations of the world would, would gather and basically almost like consume the muslims right and it's because of our we've got our large numbers but it's because of our you know love of fear of death and love of um the dunya and it's essentially that's what it is the comfort that we have in the dunya the access of, of all sorts that we have in the dunya and how the dunya itself progresses to a type of jannah like people you know i mean i don't know if you've heard of like the amazon sort of goals but like amazon as a company it's almost like the stuff that they want to do, they aspire to do is almost like achieve a dunya on earth where mm. it's like, you know, they, I don't know if you've heard of like these Amazon buttons where you can buy buttons that go on certain things. Yeah. Yeah. You just yeah. push them and it gets ordered, yeah. you know, and like it just appears and same day delivery, bro. Like how close do you want to get? Like, I'm sure what they would really want is have like a 10 minute delivery stop. Like you could press something and someone drives it to you within those 10 minutes, you know, and if they could do that, they would imagine mm. having an army of drones, bro, where you can just pick up that thing and drop it at your house. Mm. Like that is, that is gender in motion. Like they want to achieve gender, you know, there's certain things subconscious in us that we just want. Yeah. That it's almost like we, we try to achieve gender. On this and earth, people you know? even have gone to the level of, you know, at, ridiculous um uh sentence right but i've heard certain people say um death is a disease it can be cured and we will cure it 
Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> they they've seen that in like um the animal kingdom where there's certain I can't remember what it was. There's certain animals that like I think it might have been like an octopus or something. Basically they just live for so so darn long and because they examined the way their cells work, they're like, Oh, if we could adapt that and try and implement that in the human <sighs> gene. You know, we could we could cheat death, and that is you know that brings yeah. on a whole other thing. And but you got like uh, bro, Peter Thiel uh, injecting young people's blood into himself to try and you know delay <laughs> his death or whatever. But, but think though. about it. Think about it theoretically. Yeah, mm. theoretically, let's just judge it from that sort of mindset. Okay, if we could achieve um, uh, like I don't know, long life. So not even just a long life, but yeah, actually not, not even living forever, but just a long life, like thousands of years. Yeah. And then we could then combine that with the, the space race, space travel and that you've literally got unlimited resources of planets that we could just send people to populate God knows where and start up many, many earths in different places. And suddenly you've got everything you want because if you can get those supply lines going, you can get resources from God knows how many, different places. like the, the universe itself has everything you could ever want in terms of resources and materials and stuff. Mm. Obviously it takes a lot of manpower and you know, years and years and years and years, and years. but we know itself that earth itself is a finite, you know, planet. Like it, the sun itself is a finite source of energy. The universe as a whole is finite as mm. far as this, the, the modern scientific understanding of it. But it's also like almost endless in its conception. Like it's almost endless. So yeah, could, to our mind, yeah. Yeah, to our mind. So you could literally go on for bajillions of years. Um, to some so people, to them, that's exciting. So that is exciting to them. That's like, wow, it's out there. Like we just, basically the, the framework and the model is out there. You know, it makes sense mathematically. So we just need to apply ourselves and, mm. and attain that. Yeah, you know, yeah. Eternity, and this is, you know, what is it called? Immortality has always been something that is, that is infatuated people. Yeah. Um, even in the sense that, um, I mean, I know that, isn't it in the sense of, uh, God, I'm, I'm, I'm really going to bugger this up, but um, we're talking about like, uh, Adam and, and Hawa and the eating of the mm. apple and yeah know, eat, I think Shaitan said the tr about the tree uh, takuna mm. min al khalidin no yeah, exactly. so you'll be exactly. forever here or whatever mm. yeah and and that is something that has resonated in history you know when it comes to long lives when it comes to you know the the fountain of youth when it comes to the tree of life when it comes to all these stories and all these quests yeah. and, and you know even modern the medicine mixer, and even bro. Yeah, the elixir, bro. Even the, the way that we, we people try and promote health, promote well being. Mm. Um, people, when they say they die too soon, they die too young, you know. Um, mm. It's just, it is what it is, bro. Even the, the mission, I think, of SpaceX is to make humans a multi planetary species, mm. right? Now, that's like, like, I get it. It's, I understand like, why it's exciting, but what about copying all of the all of the shirk and then pasting it on Mars and then pasting mm -hmm. it on, on Venus. Like that's not exciting. Like there is, there is uh, too much man made suffering. There's too much mm -hmm. injustice. There's too much shirk. It's like, a quick fix, bro. Get rid of it, man. The hard thing is sorting ourselves out. The quick fix is just jump into another planet and doing that again and copying and yeah. pasting. But what, what they haven't realized is the nature of man is that they will, man will replicate the same problems on another planet. Mm, of course, and that's bro. why the, the, when the angels you know Allah said to angels to bow to Adam they said uh, did you create who's going to spill blood yeah, yeah, beforehand, yeah. Hamdi. so that's obviously the nature man but uh, it's a completely different way of looking at things when you're just like um, yes I want to live healthily yes I want to give my body uh, you know its rights um but I'll die whenever, you know, I'll die whenever. The main thing is I'm worshipping Allah and all of that. Well, I think, you know, don't die except that you're submitting to Allah. There's a um, concept, bro. Yeah. These people, people that are infatuated with living forever, I think, Allahu Akbar, I think there's a subconscious fear of death because of the reality that will hit them. So they try and run away from it. Whilst actually, you know, although death is a concept, it's a thing that exists. For me, I feel like I live forever. Like whether I live in Jannah or Jahannam, do you understand what I mean? Whether I, my existence will always be from this point onwards. Like there is, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we will either be in Jannah or Jannah forever, for eternity. So automatically some part of me, whether it's my soul or whether, you know, however that, that manifests is going to be forever. Yes or no? Like that's what I think. I, I, see, I see death as, 
yes, we die from the dunya, but the actual existence or the experience continues, bro. You know, I, I, it's a bridge to another realm. It's a bridge to something else. So this, mm. this, you know, whether I want to, I don't really have that much interest in living forever in the dunya, although I do want to live long enough to maximize how many good deeds I can do, you know, and that's how I should be thinking all the time. While somebody who's fearful of dying because it's the end of their existence that's what they're trying to escape from. So that's why they'll pump money into, you know, living forever, pump money into these sort of ideas. Um, as a Muslim, if you know that, well, you're going to live forever anyway, whether it's Jannah or Jahannam. Ideally, you want, obviously, Jannah. So that doesn't really concern me too much. What concerns me is having the time and the energy to put in work for it. You know, that is what it is, bro. Mm. It's, people don't think too much like that. I've, I've always thought like that since I started practicing that. Oh, actually, yeah, I am pretty much going to live forever. Like, I, with it, with, when we talk about the wider concept, not just mm. this dunya. Yes, obviously I'm going to die from this dunya, but my soul will carry on. You know, my soul will carry on either here or there. You know, first you've got the Barzakh, then you've got the Day of Judgment, then you've got Jannah or Jahannam. Like, it's, it's mm. there, it's existence. It's, I suppose it's the, window, the window that will determine where you live forever is, is short. That's it. And that's what yeah. people are holding on to. Exactly. Like, we, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has has blessed us with eternity like that's incredible whether that's you know jannah or jahannam he's he's now given us like th think about it like yes we weren't living forever before we were created by allah subhanahu ta'ala but he's the immortality aspect of it in terms of from now onwards mm. that's it like that is written you know what i mean that's spoken by allah subhanahu ta'ala it's we've got that as as proof that we will live forever in a certain sense, you know, mm. and I don't think people would ponder on that too much, but that is the, like, there is no end in sight. And if you know what I mean, like, that's why I don't think I get too, like too fixated on that element of death as it were, because yes, death as an event is, can be scary, but you don't know how you're going to die. You don't know what it's going to feel like. My, the only thing that worries me about death is the pain, you know, the pain that will, that I will experience inevitably in death and maybe if i was to be punished in in, in, the, in the grave and i, I, I hope to allah that i don't um maybe in the yom al -Qiyam, i hope to allah that i don't and maybe in jahannam i hope to allah that I, uh, that I don't you know but the reality is from now onwards this person here me the experience that i'm experiencing i'm gonna have that for an eternity like that's never gonna end that will never end because we know step by step what the process is we know that the moment that your soul leaves your body, then your soul has an experience. You know, your your soul continues, whether it gets taken up to to, to the heavens or whether it gets plummeted down, or whether you have a questioning in the grave. Your, these experiences, we're still going on. Like there is no end in sight, bro. There is no end in sight. So when you when you read those ahadith or you read the Quran and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains to you the, the system that's in place, you know, the day of judgment, Jannah, Jahannam, these things are going to happen. You get scared. Why do you get scared? Because you know you're going to go through that sort of stuff. It's not like, you know, this could happen to me. It will happen to you, whether it's good or bad, whether you're blessed or punished. Like it's, it's, it's inevitable. So, you know, I don't waste my time on thinking, you know, how can I maximize my time in the dunya with the intention of living forever it's more the intention of trying to have the time to do more but then at the same time you look at yourself and think am i doing enough like i'm not like allah's blessed me with the time now what have i done i haven't done yeah anything. yeah yeah i haven't done anything and i get That's the sad bit, man. yeah and i get envious of um i get envious of of people that have done something very visible as a project like you can see you know i'm not going to name their names but you know we both know people that have done amazing projects that if you if they were to die tomorrow we would know that project by them and that project would live on because they've made a name for themselves in terms of good deeds you know whether that's like building an orphanage or building some sort of project or helping some sort of community or being vocal about some sort of issue like i'm going to live and die and there's nothing left of my name or nothing that i can say oh yeah do you know what that would that would be my banner on yom al-qiyamah like, that would be my shining light you know and there's some people that will have children that will, will, will continue that light for them and that their, their child will be their legacy, you know? And if you were to raise a scholar or raise someone of, of you know, someone who, who leads the Muslims in a certain avenue, that can be your shining light as well. But as an individual, do I have anything that I could say, oh, the Yom Al-Qiyam, it's going to be like my, the, the beaming light of good deeds that will, 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 will save me, you know? And there will be people that will have things that they didn't even know they had, you know? It could be one action that you didn't even know that, 
guided someone to Islam who then in turn did it, you know, God knows how many amazing good deeds and you didn't have a clue, but you've got, you've got part of that. Like, but we shouldn't be relying on those invisible things. We shouldn't hope that, you know, we, we should be, and I speak to myself first, we should be doing something, you know, tangible that we can say, yeah, Allah, this is, this, what I'm doing now is solely for, mm. you know, solely for we your probably sake. probably shouldn't and be resting to... too much. That's for sure. Well, no, and, and I think discussions like this are important because if I didn't have this discussion, I would have, I would have carried on my day not really thinking like that, mm. you know. Yeah, but this yeah. is it. And this is why it has to be spoken about. And I think this is why I always, whenever we talk about the dunya too much, or we talk about the fears that could happen, whatever. I myself shoot the conversation down because I try and remind myself when I say it's only dunya, that's what I mean. I'm not mean it's not important. I mean that in the grand scale of things, in the, in the, in a, in the in a scale of eternity, this is a blip. This is less than a blip. Yeah. Because you know, eternity is forever. Yeah. Yeah. I think that the truly happiest people in this life, and they will be the happiest in the next, are the people who are struggling through life a lot with mm. a real purpose. Okay. Mm. The two, both of them, not just one. Because there are a lot of people just struggling. Uh, and there are people who, you know, have a purpose. But both of those things coming together, is the perfect thing because mm. you've got nothing to lose because you're struggling. So you don't, you, you don't have attachment to the dunya and then you find purpose in the struggle because you're like, yeah, I'm going through the struggle. I'm keeping it up for, for mm. this higher purpose for this reason. Mm. And then when you have those two things together, that's, that's the good life. I would say that's the good life, not uh, comforts and this and that, that is it. And I think there's a, there's a sweetness to life in struggle that you would just never find in comfort and you've got i mean we are so easily distracted um i don't know if it's because of the environments we live in i don't know if people are less distracted in other environments i don't know if i should even blame environment or if i should just blame myself for mm. allowing myself to be easily distracted or blame but, yourself for being in that environment <laughs> that, there's, that as well, bro. there's that as well but you know what environment doesn't have people that are distracted by the dunya you know yeah, the dunya it's nature is for everyone even yeah. even so, uh, uh, shaitan if you think about it he distracted mm -hmm. uh, adam or how yeah we think about like we think oh if i live this simple life you know out somewhere in the wilderness rural, rural and that well actually there's shepherds that are very distracted by the dunya you know, the shepherds, I'm talking about like the simple, simple, the most simple life I can think about, which is like, mm. I don't know, raising livestock and selling it. Well, there's, there's people that are very distracted by that. You know, all they can think about is the health and wealth of their sheep mm. and their flock and whatever. Mm. So it's, it's out to get everybody if you allow it to. Yeah. But I think that's why it's important to have these discussions, mm. um, to constantly remind yourself um, and to constantly just shoot, shoot yourself down a little bit when you get too caught up in it all like i know right now i'm going to switch this off and i'm going to think differently about my day than i did before we started recording and that's because mm. you know i had that discussion and i didn't shy away from um telling myself that i'm not telling you that in all honesty i'm sure you can tell yourself but me i'm it's like i'm talking to myself like oh sort it out <laughs> you know <laughs> sort it out mm. anyway bro i will have to end it there inshallah i'm sorry i don't know how long we recorded for <laughs> yeah probably longer than we planned uh, but mm. alhamdulillah was really good uh, for anyone listening remember that you can go to mindhousepodcast.com to contact us anonymously or otherwise um, you could also just send that link to people if you want them to check it out and stuff you can also play episodes there and yeah that's that's that and yeah, we're bro. also on youtube if you want to see the video version subhanakallahum wa bihamdika shadu wa nala la anta astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Thank you.